Well, I grew up on the Lower East Side of New York. There was a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, a lot of gangs. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the world I grew up in. But yeah, you know, as far as uh, negative influences that came from that or what I learned from that, you know, a lot. Uh, I don't even know where to start. My name's Harley Flanagan. I'm a musician, an author, and also a black belt at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Master Hendo Gracie. <laughs> I grew up on the Lower East Side of New York back in the late 70s, early 80s, and uh, it was a very different place than it is now. Um, if you've ever seen any of like the old movies about New York, whether it was Taxi Driver or, you know, there's so many other classic New York movies that, that depict what it was like back then. And uh, it really was a crazy place. There was a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, a lot of gangs. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the world I grew up in. Like many, uh, my parents did not stay together very long. In fact, I don't actually really remember my father at all. My mother was a hippie, you know, and uh, so we spent a lot of my childhood on the road, with, you know, hitchhiking and traveling, and there wasn't really a lot of uh, what you would say uh, normality. It came with a lot of uh, negative influences and a lot of baggage, I guess. I started playing music very young, uh, it was probably uh, also a way for me to escape my realities, you know, and uh, I started playing at all the legendary punk rock clubs of New York in the late 70s, like CBGB's and Max's Kansas City and many other clubs, uh, every, everywhere from the Mud Club to, you know, Club 57. I mean, I could name so many places in the city and eventually I started my own group called the Crow Mags. And we were uh, one of the first New York hardcore bands, they call it, uh, like hardcore punk. It's like a faster, more aggressive style of punk rock. But yeah, you know, as far as uh, negative influences that came from that or what I learned from that, you know, a lot. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Before I got into jujitsu, I was all, you know, let's just say I was pretty messy. I was trying to kick a lot of drugs. I was trying to not be as much of a lunatic as I was. And uh, I guess I was like 30 when I finally uh, met Henzo Gracie. And uh, at that point he was, he had just started teaching in New York and Jiu Jitsu gave me a place to um, strengthen myself and rejuvenate myself. And I needed that. I needed to be able to fight it, but not with violence. Like I needed a place where I could sweat and train and work. It gave me a, a strength. I needed that at that point in my life. 
put me in an, in an environment with strong people, people like Henzo. You know, not only is he a, a close friend, you know, but he's somebody that, uh, you know, I mean, he's taught me so much, you know, not just, a, forget about jujitsu, just about life. He's a real friend, you know. I, I went through some hard, hard times, you know. When a lot of people turned their backs on me, Henzo was there for me, and uh, I wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't met him. You don't meet many people in life that take you to another level. One thing he always said, which uh, I think all the time, I even wrote a song, sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. You know, that's a, a great Henzo quote. You know, sometimes after you get smashed, that's, that's when you really, uh, that's when the greatest things happen. I've learned a lot from him about, you know, picking myself back up when, when, I, when I don't think I can, because you have no choice, really. There's been plenty of times in my life where I've felt like giving up, but it doesn't mean that the laws of reality are actually gonna permit you to give up, unless you just like off yourself, and, and, and then that solves absolutely nothing, and only hurts the people that you may or may not even know actually do care about you. So you really, ultimately, you have no choice but to keep going. No matter how devastated you get, guess what, too fucking bad. Who told you that happiness was guaranteed or that life was gonna guarantee you happiness? That's some shit you gotta fight for. Life will fuck with you. You know what? Yeah, that's right, it will. And once that shit doesn't bother you anymore, then you're all right because life is gonna fuck with you. I don't think it's gonna ever stop fucking with you until you're dead. And, and that's all good, you know, when you, when you can enjoy the fight, then fight on. Smile and fight. I don't think life is ever easy. I think we get moments where it is, you know, moments of, of, of calm between storms. I, I think it's all how we learn how to react. And, that's when we're able to sail smoothly through all the madness. And you know what, that's part of the beauty of life. That's what makes us stronger, what makes us better. And it's like, each, and the tests are always gonna keep increasing and coming at you in different ways. And when you finally learn how to just like not be phased by it, then hopefully you can share that wisdom with others. It's weird because, you know, people write me all the time about my music, like, oh, you changed my life, oh, you know, your lyrics you kept me through the hardest parts of my life. I mean, even Jocko Willing told me that my music got him through some of the hardest parts of his life, like, holy crap. You know, I, I didn't have this uh, idea that I want to be this guy who influences people and reaches, you know, certainly not. It just happened. and. Um, now I'm trying to, I guess, uh, do something good with that, you know. So if the one thing I can take away from all this is experience and they can benefit others, like this is how I got to where I am now. And it was a good uh, thing, you know.